TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today on HAL TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdullah Kim Monosoya from Al TV, and we are here live at Body Thomas at the Muslim Singles and Married Media Initiative. They are having their Ramadan programs and also guess what we'll be we'll be ending with an iftar session this is not just an iftar lecture but an iftar session we'll be having our iftar here at the program and also we'll be having our ask the muslims let's see how much people know about islam about the prophet about the quran i'll be right back who is a muslim and who is a mu'min if you want to differentiate between a muslim and a mu'min you are talking about the difference between islam and iman because the word muslim it's a derivative of Islam that is brought out from Islam. And the word mu'min was also brought out from Iman. So if you are saying the difference between a Muslim and a mu'min, we are talking about the difference between Islam and Iman. Remember, in the Hadith 2 of An Nawawi, the popular 40 Hadith of An Nawawi, when that man came, Eventually, at the end of the Hadith, we got to know that the man that came to visit the Prophet in that Hadith was who? Now, Jibril, alayhi salam. Now, he asked the Prophet some questions. Akhbirni anil Islam. Tell me about Islam. What was the response of the Prophet? Antashhad an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah wa tuqima salah wa tu'tiya zakah the Prophet responded by mentioning all the five pillars of Islam. The five pillars of Islam. That this is Islam. And the scholars deduced from this and from other texts of the Sharia that Islam actually is Al Istislamu Lillah bi Tawheed. It is to submit to Allah. By taking Allah as one in all ramifications. By taking Allah as one in His worship. By taking Allah as one in everything. Islam is not only taking Allah as one in His worship. It is also to do inqiyad bi ta'a. To humiliate yourself before Allah by obeying Him. Absolute obedience. The angel asked again, Akhbirni anil iman. Okay, inform me about iman. What is iman? And the Prophet said, Antu mina billah. To believe in Allah. Wa malaikatihi. Wa kutubihi. Wa rusulihi. Wa liyawmil akhir. Wa antu mina bil qadar. Khairi wa sharrihi. He mentioned what? The six articles of faith. Now, scholars have deduced that the difference between Islam and Iman, let's see the difference now. Our deeds, actions that are manifest, clear actions, things we can see that you are doing. We see you go to the mosque, you say you are a Muslim, that's why you go to the mosque. You fast in the month of Ramadan, we say you are a Muslim, that's why you fast in the month of Ramadan. All your actions that we can see, those are the things that portray you as a Muslim. What about Iman, a mu'min? Those are al-a'amalul-ba'tina. 
those actions that are hidden in your hearts. Those actions that are hidden in your hearts. And that is why one of the scholars of Islam, Al Hassan al Basri, he said, Al Iman. What is called Iman is Shayun Wakura fil Kolbi, something that resides in the heart. Wasodakohul Amal. And your actions reflect those things from your heart. We see it from your actions. So Iman is more of the heart. It is more of your mind, your belief in Allah. While Islam is more of your open deeds, your actions, things we can see that you do. So what one thing are you taking home after this lecture? Mm, actually, I wasn't that stationed with the lecture, but at least I have one or two things at least going on with, uh, as in being a Mormon rather than just being an ordinary Muslim. So you should move from the stage of Muslim to Mu'min, after that to Muxin. One thing in which you know you will always abide with after this lecture. I want to move from the stage of being just a Muslim to the stage of a Mu'min. That's what I'm going to take home today, Inshallah. Inshallah, Amen. The Zina is not accepted in Islam and we should try as much as possible to abstain from it, especially during this Ramadan. Um, it is also said, I think probably in the Quran or Hadith, that um, one should try as much as possible to abstain from, um, sorry, for the Ramadan to be valid. You should abstain from both water, food and sexual intercourse. Though Zina is not basically more on the sexual intercourse, but we should try as much as possible to stay away, far away from Zina. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Actually, the lecturer, he spoke a lot. And, you know, from his lecture, I actually gained from it. And I mean, you talk about um, debts. When you hold some people and like, you're trying to hide from them, that when, when you don't pay them, the Allah hands, you know, your soul. So you have to pay them before you die. So those things, when he said this, I was like, oh my God, I've done a lot. May Allah forgive me. Okay. So you have to go and pay all your debt now from when you're small. To See this age, Allah make it easy for us. Amen. Okay, actually, um, I've, due to from the lecture, I've learned to be a good believer because in most of the things we do, you know, we're in the country in Nigeria, most of the things we do in school and um, sometimes with friends, we do some things that are illegal in Islam. So, but from the lecture I've listened to today, I've learned another thing concerning that on how to you know, on how to m make changes in those things. May Allah make it for us. I mean, trying to improve my deen and be a Muslim because right now I'm still a Muslim. I can't be so proud and say, okay, I'm a Muslim or a Muslim. So I'm trying to improve my deen and be a better Muslim to the extent of being a Muslim. Wow. Allah make it for us. I mean, what I'm taking back home is for me to get to get some reassess myself, try and see what I can do to push up my iman so that to make it more more stronger just like what the uh we started say that from moment to from muslim to muslim to moment so that's what i'm trying to do so that's my plan for now okay may allah make this for you allah my man assalamu alaikum alhamdulillah wa barakatuh we are still here live at the Muslim Singles and Married Media Initiative Ramadan Lecture. And with me are the two, one of the two giants that made this program a success. I will be introducing them to you. I will also be asking them, what is MSMMI and what is their plan for Ramadan? Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So can we meet you please? Uh, my name is Muhammad Mutin Orunshulu. Uh, I'm the Amir of the group, inshallah. And uh, okay, can we meet you, please? Okay, my name is Bankole Al Amin, and I'm the event uh, manager of the group. Wow, well, like I said, we are with two giants of MSMMI. So, yeah, Amir, what is Muslim Singles and Married Media Initiative about? Okay, alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, Muslim Singles Married Media Initiative is about educating the youth, uh, letting them be conscious about their ethic, like, uh, like their background. 
as a Muslim. You know, a lot of Muslims, uh, they are out there, they are unconscious about their deen. They just carry the name Muslim, but they are not really practicing. So what we do here is we try to educate people about the deen. Even though from the name, you think it's all about dating and all that, but our group transcends that. We try to educate people about the deen, talk about the Quran and the Sunnah and the Adit of the Prophet. We have a section on uh, fortnightly uh, for Sunday's programs uh, where we teach ourselves about all this. And also we, are try, we also try to provide a platform for the singles Muslim to be able to meet their partner, the Allah Lui. I, I want to emphasize that, the Allah Lui. We don't give room for people coming around saying they want boyfriend, girlfriend and the sort. What we do is the Allah Lui towards marriage. And inshallah, because Allah, we've had enough, uh, a lot of marriages within us. Like if I'm counting, maybe like 40 within the group. And uh, so many of them... Are you said 40 people have been married through this initiative. More than 40. More than 40. Allah. Allah Akbar. So back to our Honorable Event Planner, sir. Today's lecture, what was the bring behind today's lecture? And what other packages do you have for us for Ramadan? Well, um, every Ramadan that, uh, that comes up, we always, like um, Amir was trying to explain, um, we always have um, a, something new coming up, inshallah. Um, so one of the things that drives most of the topics that we have is we, uh, we, we look at um, the surroundings, we look at um, the members of our groups, we look at um, the, the situation that they find themselves in right now, and then we look at um, how it affects them individually, and then we take that and then we coin out topics that will deeply and uh, impact on them. We have so many things in plan. For instance, we just had a couple's retreat like two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, I think that was three or four weeks ago. And that was lovely, we went to, uh, was lucky, we visited um, Lekki Conservation Center with, um, and we to a couples retreat, no, it's just couples, Muslim couples. There was lectures, there was tafsir, there was, um, there's so many things that, that, that revolve around it. There was counseling, private counseling services, and legs. I, I can't begin to, um, to mention all the programs that we do. We do counseling. We do family, in fact, there's a new one that's coming up, um, what's, what's that? Muslim family outings, uh, yeah, that should, be, inshallah, should be coming up um, probably on during this Eid, uh, maybe details will be passed along later on, so it's for every single Muslim, every single family, it's not limited to uh, uh, some, some, some Muslim members or, so, or some Muslim members. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and that was a very interesting lecture, given at the Ramadan lecture of the Muslim Singles and Married Media Initiative. Afterwards, we went ahead to ask people, what did you gain from this lecture? Most of them said it. They want to move from the state of Muslim to Mukmin. Some, some said they want to stop all acts of zina. Some said they want to move and move higher in the state of Islam. Apart from that, we also went to asking them questions in our popular segment, Ask the Muslims. Well, some got it right, some got it wrong. But like I said, it's always an avenue to learn. My name is Ablaki Manosaya. See you next time. TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Allah Almighty said in the Qur'an, and indeed we have honored the children of Adam. But we often dishonor ourselves, and because we haven't actually fully grasped the concept of honor, we pursue it in dishonorable ways. 
Is honor derived from one's lineage, status, career, or appearance? Or is it deeper than that? Inna akramakum Allahi atqakum. Allah honored mankind in several ways. This entire glorious universe that He's created functions in a way that benefits us. The sun, the moon, the clouds, the rain, the trees and the seas, nature and all of its seasons and colors, all function in harmony for the sake of our benefit. Allah honored man with intellect and taught him how to use it, taught him how to write, taught him how to reason, taught him how to invent and construct, while defining for him his limits. And Allah honored man by sending him prophets and messengers with divine revelation to remind him of his purpose, teach him how to worship, beautify his character, and attain success in the hereafter. We did nothing to earn this position. As the angels were commanded to prostrate to Adam before he said, did, or achieved anything, but we have to ask ourselves, what must we do to enhance that honor? And what must we avoid that we not compromise it? Piety is here, the Prophet said. Through it, man becomes honored. Through it, our morals and character are made noble and our affairs are set right. And the things that make people great outside of piety are not neglected through it, but only further embellished. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the best of you in the days of ignorance are the best of you in Islam if you have understanding. Isn't it amazing that the ultimate measure of a man in the sight of God is the one thing that can't be seen by anyone else? And that is why Allah said immediately after that declaration that He is all-knowing and He is all-aware. As the Prophet peace be upon him said, O people, verily Allah has removed the slogans of the days of ignorance from you and its reverence of its forefathers. So now there are two types of men. A man who is righteous, pious, and honorable in the sight of his Lord, and a man who is evil, wicked, and insignificant in the sight of his Lord. All of us are the children of Adam, and Allah created Adam from dirt. Once a man passed by the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, as he was sitting with his companions. And the Prophet asked, What do you say about this man? They said, He is the most noble of people. If he proposes marriage, his proposal is accepted. And if he intercedes, his intercession is accepted. And if he speaks, people listen. The Prophet remained silent and another man passed by. And so the Prophet asked again, what do you say about this man? They said, O Messenger of Allah, this man is poor. If he proposes, he's rejected. And if he intercedes, his intercession is useless. And if he speaks, no one listens. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, but this man is better than an earth full of men like the other men. It's amazing how the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us to value people and to honor them despite what we may see of them. Or it may be that Allah sees them in an entirely different light. And so just as Allah has honored man, He's commanded us to honor one another, not to belittle one another, nor harm one another in any way. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade us from backbiting or abusing even the lowest of people. What then of disgracing an unknown friend of God? Since we don't know who they are, we honor each man and woman on the assumption that they may occupy a greater position in the sight of God than us. For the hearts of people are concealed from us, but the command to treat them with respect is as clear as night and day. O oh Allah, as you honored mankind by sending to it messengers, you honor this Ummah in particular by sending to it Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Honor us again by granting us his companionship in the highest level of paradise.
Cal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Which surah is called the heart of the Holy Quran? Please give me an option. Option A, Satu Rahman. Option B, Satu Bakora. Option C, Satu Yasin. Option D, Satu Fatia. That should be Satu Rahman too. Fatia. Rahman. Final answer. Yes. Final answer. Fatia. You were wrong. You Satu Yasin. You were wrong. You Satu Yasin. It's called the heart of the Quran. Satu Fatia is the mother of the Quran. <laughs> In how many years were the Maki Surahs revealed? Surahs revealed in Mecca. In how many years were they revealed? It was 13 years. 13 years. Are you sure? Yes. Final answer? Yes. Are you sure? You know there are gifts involved now. I, I know there are gifts. I'm not sure. Options. Option A, 13. Option B, 10. Option C, 14. Option D, 12. It was 13. 13. Final answer? Yes. You were right. 13 years. So final answer? Yeah. That's it. You were right. 13 years. Modern surahs were revealed for 10 years. <laughs> How many surahs are in, are in the 30th part of the Holy Quran? How many surahs are in the 30th? 30, 37 or something. I'm not so sure. Okay. I think... <laughs> oh, I don't know the exact but like um, are there options? Is there options? You want options? Yes. Okay. Option A, 30. Option B, 33. Option C, 35. Option D, 37. I'm not so sure. Something is not an option. Yeah, 37. Final answer. Wow, I'm so rusty. <laughs> I think 35. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> yes. You were wrong again. It was 37. I said something is not in the option, so is that 30, 30, be sure of 30 what? 37. Final answer? Yes. Wow, I think I'm with a, with a scholar. You are right, 37. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Join us again tomorrow for more. Why come you like? Do you want option? I want option. I like option. I like I'm not sure. You are going to exercise patience. We are going to talk about patience this episode. Patience is to restrain yourself from what you like or from what you you want to do. To restrain yourself. To discipline yourself to keep away from some things. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.